Hello, I'm Jeff for News 6. Today our show will give you interesting news from the Fort Wayne, Indiana area. We'll have several informative stories, plus a couple of timely interviews. <coughs> our school, St. Henry Elementary, is located in the southeast section of Fort Wayne. The building opened its doors in 1959. The, building, the school was named for Mr. Henry Havel, whose father donated the land for the school. St. Henry School currently serves the needs of 400 students in grades 1 through 8. <coughs> Learning can be fun, especially when the subject is the elective class program at St. Henry School. The last class period of the day is set aside for elective classes that are of special interest to the students. Over 20 classes are offered throughout the week. Some of the regular electives are home economics, cake decorating, sewing, knitting, arts and crafts, French, Spanish, German, and advanced math. Those classes are offered each semester. <coughs> this year we added more elective classes to the list. These include wrestling, communication arts, small machine mechanics, and sign language. The, pho the photography elective meets for the entire year with their last project of the year being the school yearbook. With the coming of spring, emphasis is placed on the science fair. This year, over 200 students took part, entering projects concerned with things like what study habits are best, physical education, ecology, diet and health, and many more. A classmate, Julie Eber, has a live interview concerning the science fair. With that interview, here's Julie. We are in the studio, and with me is Mark Gabrick. Mark, what was your project about? My project was about the use of electricity at St. Henry School. Why did you choose this project? Well, I was hearing so much about energy conservation and what the people can do about it, so I decided to conduct an experiment on St. Henry's. How did you gather your information? For the teachers to record their electricity, I get passed out sheets and collected the ones from the previous day. I did that two different weeks. And to see how much electricity we were using, I made recordings from the school's light meters. What did you hope to accomplish with your project? Well, as I was doing this project, I was thinking less energy could be used when being aware of how much was being used. And now back to Mary with more stories. The St. Henry neighborhood will be ringing with the call of, hurry, 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 buy your tickets. Carnival time is just around the corner when handcrafted items, homemade baked goods, games, and many other interesting things will be tempting the crowds. Everyone at St. Henry School is hoping that this year's carnival will be better than ever. We're sure, we're sure that everyone attends will have lots of fun. There will even be a booth where the students can test their skill by throwing a wet sponge at the teacher. The students in grades 1 through 4 at St. Henry School are enjoying a difference in their reading program. It's called language arts. The first graders learn phonics through a use of sound cards used for sounding out and spelling words. Another part of the learning is the writing cycle. The students learn from their own mistakes and those of their classmates. Games and other activities are included in the classes. The language arts programs seem to be going well, and by the end of the first grade, the students are well on the way to reading and writing, and they're having fun, too. Earlier in the show, our classmate reporter, Julie Eber, had an interesting interview for us. Now, another of our classmates reporter, Richard Jenkins, has another interview that also concerns the science fair. Here's Richard with that interview. The water in this glass is drinkable, and we never consider giving it a second thought. With me is Frank Smetana. Frank, should we give this water a second thought? Yes, I think we should, because by 1980, Fort Wayne's water supply is likely to become a problem. Before we get into your project, would you explain the SAVE program? Yes, it's Governor Bowen's student action for valuing the environment. What is your project and how did you go about getting your information? It's a bacterial analysis of Fort Wayne waterways and what I did was I collected samples along Fort Wayne rivers and streams and I cultured them in nutrient agar and petri dishes. And uh, from this, I hope to find w what industries contribute to the rivers, uh, clean the sewage treatment plant is, 
and uh, the bacterial content of uh, the ditches and streams at entrance points to rivers. What conclusions did you arrive at? That the Fort Wayne sewage treatment plant pollutes the Maumee River, that uh, the Fort Wayne East End industrial section doesn't contribute to much good bacteria to the Maumee River, and that turbidity created by a waterfall influences bacterial growth. Thanks, Frank. And a word with Tony. I was unable to escape the reality of the 20th century. The Indians are no longer here like they once were. The sound of cars have replaced the sound of the horse and wagon. The reality of the past has been replaced with markers which read, Here Stood. I am standing just a stone's throw from the junction of the St. Mary's, St. Joseph, and the Maumee Rivers. It is near this spot that General Anthony Wayne, in 1812, withstood the onslaught of Indians loyal to the British. Behind me, still under construction, is the new old Fort Wayne. In a few short months, this fort will become a living monument to the men and women and an important role they played in, a, in the past. The soldiers will once again be on guard. The blacksmith anvil and hammer will ring as he works on the steel rims for the wagon wheels. The baker will be busy making bread and the women churning butter. The past will not be forgotten if we allow our minds to just dream for a few short minutes. Before I leave this old fort, I would like to read a poem written by John Gottschall, a student at St. Henry's. The past 200 years. As this poem begins, we should look back to the past 200 years and any before that. From the early pioneers doing their chores to the pain and destruction of two world wars. And although these may not be pleasant to recall, they belong to the home of the free, one and all. We belong to that country, all our hopes and fates, to an everlasting freedom, the United States. We must never abuse this freedom, nor take it for granted, the independent country our founding fathers planted. From the days of Columbus and the Mayflower too, remember it is our country and it all starts with you. I'm Jeff speaking for Julie, Mary, Richard, Tony, and everyone in the communication arts class and everyone in the sixth grade at St. Henry School in Fort Wayne, Indiana. We hope you enjoyed our new sixth presentation today. We also hope you have a good day. Thank you.